so is that this oven being left on with the door open? Okay. <laughs> I would not recommend it as a cheap heating hack, you will not be surprised to hear. With energy bills on the rise this winter, TikTok has become flooded with heating hacks, aka cheap ways to heat your home on a budget. From sticking a terracotta pot over a candle to cling filming your windows, some of these hacks seem a little bit too good to be true, or even dangerous. I decided to speak to an energy expert to see if these will actually work, and most importantly, if they're safe. So hi, I'm Joanna, I work at the Energy Saving Trust. I'm the Energy Saving Trust Knowledge Manager, so a lot of what I do is looking at data out there on energy efficiency and renewable energy um, and trying to work out what's useful advice for, for people at home. Um, mm. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous about the um, balancing of that terracotta pot and whether that's actually a stable surface for that to go on. Um, I have seen a few of these types of ways of heating your home. Um, ultimately, we can't create more energy. Um, we can only, first law of thermodynamics is we um, can only change one form of energy to another and um, so you're only still going to get the same amount of heat out of that candle as is in that candle whether that pot was on the top or not and um, so if you like burning the candle sure you'll get a bit of heat off it and um, but it's not going to be your effective house heating solution and um, whether the terracotta pots kind of helps more effective distribution of that heat possibly and um, but I am a bit nervous about how stable that is and whether there might be a fire risk so would you recommend it would you not recommend it as a cheap heating hack I would not recommend it as a cheap heating hack you will not be surprised to hear um, if you are looking for just heating one room and you're looking to do that cheaply um, I would definitely recommend using the radiator valves on your radiator what you want to do is you want to go to your oven you want to set the temperature to approximately 525 degrees hit start and then once you have that set you want to open your oven wide like this and then you also want to turn so is that thing. this oven being left on with the door open Okay, <laughs> um, I would really not recommend this. Um, this is a substantial um, risk. It's going to be expensive. Um, what you're basically then using to heat that room is the electric element in the back of that electric um, oven, um, the same way any electric heater would work. So you're sending electricity through the heating element, um, the resistance of that element causes that electricity to turn into heat, um, and that heat's coming out. So it's going to be as expensive as any plug-in heater is going to be without any of the safety <laughs> of a plug-in heater. Um, potentially it's going to do it faster because it's going to be a much bigger heating element, you're heating your oven much hotter than you are a fan heater or something, um, but there's a reason they don't let heaters Get, get that big um, and so yeah I mean after cooking after you've turned the heating element off you open the oven door for a bit to let that heat get into the room that's not a bad thing but I am I am not recommending um, this as a hack to, to heat your home certainly not cheaply um, and I don't think it's very safe either. Radiator reflector foil is one way to keep your house warm it reflects yep so what he's doing is installing um, a kind of foil lined backing behind the radiator they have been shown to be somewhat effective what they're doing is that metallic surface is reflecting any radiant heat um, from your radiator instead of going into your wall back into the room. Um, despite their name, radiators, most of their heat comes out as convection. Um, so when we're when I'm talking about convection, what we're saying is we're heating the air. Um, the warm air is rising, cooler air sinks to the bottom of your, of your room and then that gets heated and that cycle continues until all of the air in, in the room is nice and warm. Um, radiant heat is more like the heat you feel from like the sun or a fire where you if you're not in the direct line of it, you don't feel the heat. So if you pop your hand in front of your face in front of a fire for example suddenly your face feels quite cool but, but your hand feels warm and um, that's that's that type of heat that's channeling it's not heating up the air but it's heating up an object when it kind of hits that object and um, so about it does depend on the size of the radiator and the temperature and everything else um, but approximately 10% of the heat from your radiator is being lost as or given out um, as radiant heating so that could save maybe 10% of the heat back into the room and um, it's not shown to be super effective if your walls are already insulated so if you're doing it on a kind of an, if your radiator is on like an internal wall so a wall between two rooms it's probably not going to do that much because that wall is already going to be quite warm um, and if you've insulated your external walls again there might be some saving but it's probably going to be quite negligible and um, if you've got uninsulated external walls and a radiator on one of those they're quite cheap it's quite easy to DIY it's worth a shot I would say um I mean electric blankets are quite low energy and um, it does depend on exactly which one that you buy but they can sometimes be somewhere around 300 watts or 400 watts so they're quite low heat um out of them um I mean it's kind of what you're comparing it to really um it will be quite safe like this it's not too different from from 
um, laying it on a bed, I would just be a bit careful it's not on for too long and um, you're probably you know you shouldn't leave your electric blanket on overnight similar with this maybe you know following whatever the manufacturer's guidance are and um, my only I guess concern would be is are you doing this to then avoid heating the rest of the room and um, maybe one night it wouldn't be such a, a bad deal and um, but if you are habitually not heating and um, the room in your home and um, you're going to end up with a really cold home and um, no surprise and um, but the, the damage that could be caused you're still going to be breathing out a lot of moisture you're going to be cooking you're going to be showering you're going to be generating a lot of moisture and when that moisture in the air meets a cold surface it condenses and, and turns into water droplets and that's when you get things like condensation on your windows in the morning if you ever wake up after a night and your windows are all steamed up that's that happening and um, opening a window solves that but if you're doing that all the time it's collecting on walls it's going to be collecting into the structure of your home and, and could lead to kind of problems with condensation, damp, mould and all the kind of health and, and well-being risks that come along with that as well as kind of structural issues you know you could be causing damage to, to the structure of your home. Um, so I would say yes for an exceptionally cold night if you want a little boost of heat it's maybe not a bad thing to do this for, for a couple of hours provided the electric blanket instruction manual <laughs> says it's okay to have it bent this way um, but yeah you know, presumably it's okay, um, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it as a kind of long-term heating solution. What Kling Film is trying to recreate for a, a cheaper way some of the draft proofing and insulating kind of harder sheet plastic that you can get for windows. Um, ideally, we replace single glazing with double glazing and triple glazing, but I do appreciate that's at quite an expense and, and not everyone can afford to do that or indeed might rent and don't even have the power to even do it if they had the money. Um, so lots of people will be looking for ways to deal with that and um, particularly with single glazing a lot of the um, heat that's being lost is actually I mean a lot of it's to do with the single panel of glass you've got but a lot is also the draft proofing around you you're there will probably be gaps between where the pane meets the wall um, and in all those gaps and holes lots of warm air is, is leaving your home and um, so something that the cling film won't do is it's not going to address any of those gaps where some of this harder sheet plastic that you kind of stick all the way around the frame does it blocks everything and um, so they do work much more effectively and um, I haven't seen any study that proves how effective a cling film is. Um, I can understand why, but it is going to be quite limited. Um, will look quite messy, um, and you're probably going to have to redo it quite a few times um, as and when you're opening the window and, and moving it around. So I would advise it, is, it costs a little bit more than the cling film, of course. But you can get these DIY harder sheet plastics that you can attach to the frame. You just remove them as and when you need to open the window, um, and they, they are being shown to be effective, whereas the cling film is still a bit of a maybe. <laughs> improved science what tips would you recommend for people to like have like cheap ways to insulate and heat their homes my number one would be draft proofing and um, most of us don't live in modern very well airtight homes so most of us have some drafts around so i'm talking around windows around doors around letter boxes keyholes under doors and um, even things like our plumbing fixtures you know where pipes are coming into the home and wiring's coming into the home and um, there's likely to be little gaps between the external and the outside and through those gaps heat energy is going to want to escape so if you can block those and there's multiple different materials that you use for this it could be kind of sealants and the stuff you get in a tube that you spread so you might do that around your skirting boards and your floor you can get brushes for the bottom of your doors and, and windows and um, seal tapes that you kind of stick around any of these gaps draft proofing is probably the best in terms of cost effectiveness so the amount you're spending on it versus what you're getting out of it um, in terms of any of the energy efficiency advice um, that our organization would give the only caution i would say around that is just making sure you still keep the home very well ventilated so don't fill anything that's purposefully there don't fill air bricks don't fill trickle vents use extractor vans and um, all that kind of thing because we still want to make sure we've got fresh air coming into the home um, so it's safe but draft proofing number one and um, number two heating controls please make sure you know how to effectively use your um, boiler, your radiator, your thermostat programmer, time your heating so that it comes on as and when you need it and um, you're not having your heating on when, when you're not there or you're not needing it quite as warm. Use the radiator valves at your radiator to turn them down in, in rooms that you're not using and higher in the rooms that you are um, and just make sure that your thermostat's set to the lowest comfortable temperature. So if you're happy at 19, set it to 19 um, and the boiler will click on and off in order to meet that program. Um, that's the two biggest things I would give somebody um, to make sure they're, they're in control of, of their heating.